Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. This morning we're going to do a vegetable harvest, including some spicy radishes. I'm going to take those to the kitchen along with the cabbage and the carrots, add in some chilies and make a spicy sauerkraut type ferment. First up to harvest today is some asparagus. Now this plant here has been in the ground for four years. And actually it looks like two different plants because we've got the green asparagus here and then I've got another purple variety coming up here. I'm not sure what's happened, but I'm happy to accept both types. Beautiful. I harvested a couple of stalks from this plant last year, but it looks like we're going to be getting a lot more from now on. Next up, we're going to just grab some of this beautiful purple cauliflower. This plant's a pretty amazing plant. It's been in the ground for about two years. First year I planted it and harvested my head of purple cauliflower and then just sort of let the plant go. And what's happened over the last couple of years, it, the plant did get enormous, but I've left it and I did find a lot of the, the stalks broke off it. And what has grown recently is more heads of this beautiful purple cauliflower. So we're going to grab those today so that I can make some collie and leek soup. And I'll be throwing all these young leaves into the soup as well. That big purple cauliflower plant did go to seed in that first year and I transplanted lots of the little seedlings around the garden. And what I'm finding now is variations to the purple cauliflower theme. This one's slightly greener. It might have actually crossed with a green maserata cauliflower that I also let go to seed. And um, you can see a lot more green in this plant here. Now I have already taken the head from this one and it's a bit like the sprouting broccoli really, although it is a, a cauliflower variety. And I just usually whip those off and use those in a stir fry or chopped up in any dish where I want a bit of veg. This plant here is also a daughter of that original plant. And this head is perfect to take right at the moment. So I might just grab that before it starts the sprouting process. So just here will be sprouts like you saw on the other plant before that will grow up and I'll be harvesting those for stir fries. Here's another plant that I've missed as the head variety, but that will still be great as is. Now I'll just grab some carrots for this ferment that we're going to do. Okay, I think that's enough, but we might just give those a quick rinse before adding to our basket. Now we're going to grab some cabbage. Hiding in here, I still have three cabbages. Now they're probably riddled with slugs by now, but I'll clean it all up and they should shred up fine for this uh, ferment. All right. Oh yes, look at that. Lots of our friends, the worms and our not so friendly slugs. So we'll give that a rinse off at the tap. But what I have found with these sorts of cabbages is I do have to remove leaf by leaf and kind of wash them all. But um, that's just the price you pay for organic food. And I haven't worked out how to keep all these critters off it as yet. Yeah, I'll just grab these leeks as well. There's another one hiding in here, which I think I'll grab. bit like the cabbages with all the, the little worms and everyone on it. Now up in this here are some volunteers 
which I wasn't sure what it was. At first I thought it was a beetroot and then I thought it was a Swiss chard, but now I think it's a beetroot again. So we're gonna harvest some beetroot today as well. So we've got two plants here, which are in the park. And uh, yeah, definitely think that is a beetroot. And we've got another one just here. I've run out of my beetroot chips, so I'm gonna dehydrate beetroot slices and they make a really delicious snack. There's one more in the path here, but uh, I think that could go a little bit longer. And just further around this little garden, I've got some beetroot that I planted, but they're still a little bit young. But over the back here, I've got Chiogia beetroot, and there's one there that should be big enough to use. They're a beautiful pink colour, and you can also use the, the leaves, a bit like Swiss chard leaves. I chop those up along with the stalks and use them in stir fry, or if they're really young leaves, you can pop them in a salad. And I usually just sort of fill in the little hole where I've taken one from so you can leave the other plants to keep growing. And hiding in this sea of mostly Swiss chard, there is a little bit of kale hiding in here, is another Chogia beetroot, which is perfect for harvesting. Just leave that one for the moment and take this one with us. I've given the beetroot a bit of a wash, but I might just pull off some of these leaves. I certainly don't need them all in the kitchen and share them with my flock back here. Now, right in the middle of the path just here, which I would like to clear, are my spicy radishes that are going to make my ferment today. They're the, the red round sort of variety. And this looks like a Spanish round. It's very small, but it's going to go because I want to clear this path. Pull those out. Get the slugs off. Actually, that might be one of my purple radishes. And this almost looks like a cross between the Spanish and the purple, actually. All right. Now, that's what happens when you rely on volunteer plants. Sometimes you get a bit of a cross but uh, these four radishes will be perfect fermented up with my chilies, cabbage and carrots. And with all these amazing fresh greens, I might take some of the younger leaves and chop that up and include it in the ferment as well. Oh, I think we should have brought out two baskets today. Oh, I'll just plonk that down by the side of it. I was going to grab these globe artichokes, but I think I might leave those for another day. It looks like we've got plenty to deal with in the kitchen today. The last thing I'm going to grab today is just a bit of kale, which I like stir fried in with my omelettes for breakfast. So this one's a red Russian kale, and this one's a curly leaf kale. You can see why it's named that. I think it's also called a scotch kale as well. So I'll just grab a few leaves from those plants. Most of my Tuscan kale is going to seed now. This plant has been fantastic for about a year. So I'm going to let it go to seed, spread those seeds around it so we get some more fabulous plants in the garden. But just to make sure that I will have some plants, I've also started some seeds. So let me show you that. Now, just under this old window, I have started quite a few seeds, which are starting to look um, successful, actually. I have five rows 
each containing four different seeds. And I've got a little chart that tells me what is where. Now this is my row of radishes. These are the daikon radish, which look at the right size to be able to transplant out into the garden. These are the heritage purple radish. We've got one little breakfast radish that's come up. So it would have been nice to see a few more of those, but they're old seeds. And that's an icicle radish, which is a sort of smaller, spicier version of a daikon. We've got Swiss chard seeds coming up there. A bit hard to spot there, but I've got some little Tuscan kale seedlings coming up. These are Scotch kale, which is actually the curly leaf kale. I've got um, cabbages, and I think that one's my sprouting broccoli, actually. We've got cauliflower coming up, and that is Brussels sprouts. And we've got pak choy, a red pak choy, and a little tatsoi. Now, all I started these seeds in was some of the mushroom compost that I used to make these uh, garden beds. And uh, the plan is just to transplant them once they're kind of big enough. And I think these radishes will be perfect size right now, and I'll be doing that shortly. But I'll leave all these other seeds go a little bit longer. So we'll just cover that back over carefully. So I've just put it on a little bit of timber just to keep it off the seedlings a little bit more until I get those transplanted. Now just to show you the other seedlings I had going, that one's a spinach there and I can't quite remember what I've put in for the others. I'll have to check my video out. But they're starting to germinate now. And my little uh, lettuce transplants are starting to establish also. Well, I think we've got enough veg out of the garden. Let's head to the kitchen and start on this veggie ferment. After bringing your veg into the kitchen, the uh, process of cleaning it all begins. So I get the mud off the carrots and also the radishes and tidy them up a bit. I've also separated out some of the greens from the, the radish greens that I'm gonna be using in the recipe. And I also cleaned up my cabbage. Mm -hmm. Now, Sometimes this can take a while. It's not the sort of um, cabbage you buy at the store where it's all clean and lovely. I find that my cabbages are home to lots of worms and snails and slaters and slugs. So it's cleaning all of them and all their poop out, which does end up with a big pile of leaves, which you can still shred up just as well as a whole cabbage that's been not pulled apart. I'm just gonna shred up my radishes and carrots in my Thermomix. So I chop them into larger size pieces before I add them in. And we'll see what that looks like kind of chopped up into smallish pieces and we're just going to shred up the, the cabbage and the greens. I'm just going to shred those leaves off the stalks. I prefer the texture of cabbage when it's hand shredded than in a machine. And it doesn't take too long. I'm also going to add in these chilies that I've had frozen. I will remove some of the seeds. I'm gonna shred those before adding them to the rest of our veg. That's perfect, I wanted it fairly fine. Add all of this together. Add in the chilli. I've weighed all the veg so I can calculate the salt needed for a 2% brine solution. 
So we are needing about 46 gram of salt. Okay, that will be perfect. So we just need to sprinkle our salt onto our veg. And if I'd thought about it, I would have added the chilies in after I've done this because I don't really want to be massaging chilies with my hands. So I've got a bag on my hand just to protect from chili burn really. So we've just got to work all of this in like you would just a sauerkraut. Not ideal. So I'm just giving it a good squeeze while I go and I will just leave it like that for 10-20 minutes or so just to let that salt go to work and start to release some of the juices from all these vegetables. Now I've left my mixture to sit here for 10-15 minutes and we have a collection of liquid forming there, but I'm going to give it a little bit more of a massage before I pack it into my jar. Well, I reckon that might be enough liquid to do the trick. All I'm going to do now before I take my plastic bag off is add in some flavours. I've got about a teaspoon each of ground black pepper some um, black mustard seeds and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. I'm going to add that in and just mix that around. Okay, I think that's all mixed in pretty well now. So we'll get that into our jar and get it fermenting. I'm just going to pack all of this into this jar and push it down as I go just to make sure we reduce the chances of any air pockets in there so that it's an anaerobic ferment. That's when the correct bacteria go to work. Okay, and now I am going to just pour the rest in. Okay, just with my potato masher, I'll push all of that right down and get it underneath the liquid and just check for any air bubbles. So that all looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to pop this cabbage leaf in there. And I'm just going to add a jar of water just for the weight with a lid on it so that the two liquids don't mingle because you want to maintain that salt ratio. And we should hopefully keep all of that vegetable underneath the surface, but I will be checking on that during the week. Pop the lid on there. Now I'll just pop it in my cupboard. And we'll leave it there for a week to 10 days and come back and give it a try. Okay, it's nine days later and I think our sauerkraut will be ready. I did try it two days ago and it was very close. So I'm anticipating it's going to be just perfect today. So let's get into it and uh, see how it tastes. Now one of the things I did struggle with the other day was getting this jar out. I hadn't really thought that through with this container, but I can kind of tip it out into a bowl. Okay, okay I'll add that back in. Okay, now for the taste test. Definitely got some kick to it, but not too much. I wasn't sure with how much chilli to add in. And along with the, the radishes that I didn't know how spicy those ones would be. Now I'm going to be repackaging this so that I can avoid this issue with my jar and trying to get that out. Out of the flavours that I added in, the cumin seeds really is the dominant flavour with the taste. 
Uh, I think this is going to be great added to grilled meats or into a salad or I might even try it with my omelettes for breakfast as a little bit of a probiotic hit in the mornings. The jar and the cabbage keeps all of that vegetable under the liquid. Well, I've got one jar to use now and two to put away for later. Now, I think this is a fantastic way to use up those fast growing radishes. But if you've got another way that you like to use radishes, please let us all know down in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.